Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's video about the LS2 Valiant 2 helmet. So the Valiant 2 takes the original concept of LS2's Valiant helmet and has just improved on it in a couple of notable areas, mainly the ventilation and also the way the visor changes. It's still essentially the same basic convertible helmet. That's how I think of them. They can be converted between full face and open face. I've also seen them described as flip overs, which I think is a really good term because what you do is push this button at the base of the chin bar and then it pings the visor up to create some clearance between the chin bar and the visor. It stops that chin bar from scratching it as it passes over. And then where a normal flip front helmet stops at this point and gives you a, quite a top heavy weight distribution, this one continues and the chin bar nestles at the back there. So you've got better weight distribution from having it sat back. You've also now got proper use of your visor, whereas on a normal flip front helmet, the visor tips back with the chin bar. When you want to return to the full face configuration, just pull the chin bar back across and once again it lifts the visor to keep it clear of the chin bar as it passes. Click it in place, slot the visor back down and now we're back to a full face configuration. One difference between this version of a convertible or flip over helmet and some of the others, notably the Shark, is that it's possible to convert this helmet from open face to full face while riding. That's what I found in my experience. There's no lock to hold that back in place. That's something that the Shark does have a lock and you need to stop and operate that with two hands. This one is a single hand operation. You just overcome some resistance holding the chin bar at the back there and flip it over and back into place. So some basics. The shell is made from an LS2 material that they call kinetic polymer alloy. They make some pretty bold claims about that combining the weight benefits of a composite fiber shell with the strength of polycarbonate. But if there are weight savings in the shell, they don't really tell in the overall weight of the helmet. We weighed this size medium Valiant 2 on our scales and it came in at 1,795 grams, which is pretty meaty, especially when you consider that the equivalent shark helmet weighs about 160 grams less, which is about 10%. Like I said earlier, one of the main improvements on this helmet over the previous model is in the ventilation. The chin vent on the Valiant 2 is bigger than on the original helmet and sliding this switch allows air to flow through that grille and to the inside so there's more air flowing through there. That combines with improved venting on the top. Opening these switches here allows air to flow through and through two holes down into the interior of the helmet. There are channels now through the EPS line and they're quite shallow channels that allow some air to circulate and travel towards the back where then warm air can escape through the two exhaust vents that outlet here and they are permanently open. Moving to the visor, it's good broad deep visor that offers plenty of vision. It's pin lock max vision protected so the majority of the aperture is covered by that insert to protect you from mist without it ever impeding your vision. It's a pin lock 70 insert so it's pin lock's most basic grade but it's effective enough. And one quirk of this visor, it was the same on the original Valiant, is that the lifting tab sits at the top. It's kind of a motorcycle an instinct that you try to lift your visor from the base. Pretty much every helmet I've ever used other than the Valiant had its tab at the bottom so it takes a while to overcome your instinct to do that. I used this on about a 10 day tour, I used a Valiant a couple of years ago and it took me the duration of that tour really to start looking for the visor tab there. The big change that anyone who owns a Valiant will be really envious of I think is the way the visor can be replaced. If I tried to show you how to change a Valiant 1 visor, then the bleep machine on this video would be running into overdrive because it was a pain. Now it's just a case of sliding this lever across and the visor comes free from its mounting. Keep that slid, hook this part down inside and the visor's back in. It takes seconds and it's gone from being one of the hardest visors to change to one of the easiest. The main outer visor is supported by an internal sun visor that operates on this switch on the left hand side and it's got good breadth and depth of coverage but it's not 
anti-fog protected. So you might find that misting up as you ride. And if you do, just lifting that chin bar will allow a little bit more air to flow and it'll clear that internal sun visor. Moving to the interior, it's plush, it's comfy, it's easily removable. It's 3D cut to shape, so it doesn't need to really bed in too much from the beginning and it's moisture wicking, so you won't get a big buildup of sweat inside. The cheek pads are also thin just at the top near the temple, so it's even much easier to fit a pair of spectacle arms down the side there without it being uncomfortable. And then the strap fastener is a micrometric buckle, as you would expect on a touring commuter helmet like this. Overall, I really like the concept of convertible helmets or flip overs and that flexibility to choose between an open face and a full face and have both with you on a trip without having to take two helmets. There are some issues that you need to bear in mind. These helmets are quite heavy and a long day in the saddle can leave you with a bit of neck ache. I found that when I took a Valiant original away for a couple of weeks. I found that at the end of the day, I was pretty tired. And they're also quite noisy. There's lots of different protrusions here for the wind to catch and make that ride a little bit noisier than on other helmets. So earplugs are an essential with a helmet like this. But maybe touring is using it in a way for which it's not really intended. LS2 described this helmet as an urban commuter helmet. So maybe that's the kind of environment to which this helmet's best suited, running around the city where maybe you're not quite reaching the same speeds and you're not spending long days in the saddle. I hope that gives you all the detail you'd like about the LS2 Valiant 2 helmet, but if there's anything you'd like to ask or add, please pop a comment below. Thanks very much for watching.